Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. In peace, let us praise the Lord. For the peace of God, the salvation of our souls, let us praise the Lord. For the peace of the Lord, for the goodness of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this we ask for those with faith, reverence, and the fear of God in your hearing, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this we ask for the Lord. David, for the honorable friends, the community, the active in Christ, for the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for this country's president, for all civil authorities, and for those who serve in the armed forces, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for this city, for every city in the country, and for those who are faithful out there, and let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For out of those tribulation, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, when I pray. Lord have mercy. Every time most holy, most pure, most blessed, and glorious, lay it down to all us, and never burden Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other. Lord, I thank you, Christ our God. For unto the word of all glory, I bring worship to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and we to the region. Oh, <laughs> 
the Virgin appears in the temple of God, in anticipation proclaiming Christ to all. Let us rejoice and sing to her, rejoice the fulfillment of the Creator's dispensation. In truth, I was screaming to my flock as a rule of faith. And in the age of humility, and the teacher of our accidents, the humility exalted me. The quality that reached me. I learned for the miracle. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
and to them that were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. Now therefore you are no longer citizens, the strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens of the saints, and members of the household of God. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building, being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are being built together into a habitation of God through the Spirit. Wisdom. In the seventh thought, Alleluia, 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 it is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to thy name, O Most High. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. To declare thy mercy in the morning and thy truth by night. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. In the eighth dawn, hearken, O daughter, and stand in my light here. Alleluia, Alleluia. quite familiar to us, and something that really needs to, to strike each and every one of us who hears it in any way, shape, or form. The gospel tells us, you know, of the, the rich man, the man who had acquired so much that he didn't have enough place to put everything. I will build more so that I have a place to put it all, and now I can say, eat, drink, 
take your ease and be merry because you're taken care of for the next, for a while. You don't have to worry about any material needs. At which point God then says, fool, this night will be required of you. And then all of this stuff that you've acquired, whose is it? Because we cannot take it with us. We really cannot take it with us. This is, particularly here in North America, something that I find quite problematic, something that we really have to be aware of. Because we find ourselves in many places, and in many of the readings that I, I see from other places, we find ourselves very rich towards God, or rich towards material things, and not rich towards God. And we are find ourselves as deceived and is in a dangerous position as modern North American capitalists as anything that happened in the old Soviet Union. Because that's one of the great Soviet arguments. You know, we've got to provide material needs. It's here and now because the rest of it doesn't matter. God doesn't exist. Yet modern American capitalism and modern Western capitalism also has very little place for God. Because if you look carefully at how we're marketed everything, look at the commercials, read the print, read the texts, everything about it tells us that, you know, if you're unhappy, all you need to do is buy more stuff. And if you have enough stuff, and if you buy the right stuff, and if you drink the right soda pop, if you eat the right potato chips, then you'll be happy. That's all you need to be happy. I mean, if, you, if, if you're still not happy, you need then a bigger house and a bigger car and more this and more that. And buy, 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 and that will make you happy. But it doesn't make us happy. It can't make us happy. And we've known this on an intuitive level for generations and generations and generations. And there was a song back in the 70s, you know, satin sheets to lie on, satin pillows, and still I'm not happy. <laughs> All of these things, because this stuff, stuff doesn't make us happy. Stuff doesn't leave us fulfilled. It is only our relationships with God, our walk with the Christ, and in that walk with Christ, our relationships with the people around us is what we will find meaning. That's what we will find meaning. That's where we find orthodoxy, and that's where we find truth and peace of soul. Because then we can look at it and go, you know, all of these things are important. All of these things are necessary for life. You know, I have to have enough food. I have to have shelter. I have to have warmth. But if I don't have it, I can still find peace of soul and peace of heart and be a servant of Christ. I don't need all of this stuff to have good, healthy relationships with the people around me. That's a critical thing to remember as we move into the Christmas season now. Because the Lord knows, I mean, you know, the family that I was raised in was, you know, very simple. My mother would have, it's a cartoon that came out right after she passed on, but she would have loved it. It's a little turkey yelling at Santa Claus saying, okay, fat, so back off November's mine. But if you look at the marketing, again, Buy more stuff, you know. Some of the hobby stores have, have put out their Christmas stuff in July. It's the old joke that I used to remember from Colorado about old Fred Schmidt. You know, I remember when Christmas in July was an electronics sale. Now it's actually when we put out our Christmas decorations so we can start marketing people to buy more stuff. And the stuff doesn't save us. It's important to remember it. I mean, we hold on, and sometimes, and particularly with our native culture, the stuff, the atu, the clan crests, the, the hats, 
the staffs, all of these things that are passed on throughout the clan from generation to generation, we know they're not ours. That's a great value. That's a great value to those things there, is we know whoever has them, they're not mine. They've come before me, they've come before me, and they've come before me, and they've come before me, and when I'm done, when it's my time to go, I hand the caretaking off to someone else. But even then, they do not belong to me. They will not belong to the caretaker whom I give them to. They belong to the clan. They belong to all of us. And the church and our relationship with God must become the same way. The relationship to all of our things must become the same way. These are not mine. They're on loan from God. And when I am gone, they will go to someone else. These things cannot be the source of my happiness, the source of my pride, the source of my identity. Because once I do that, then my things become an idol. And our things and our stuff becomes a violation of the commandments. Thou shalt have no idols. Thou shalt have no, no other gods beside me. And our stuff almost becomes a god. And we violate in our heart, in our soul, and in our mind. Sometimes without even meaning to. The words of Christ are on our lips. The words of the gospel are on our lips. But our servants, the person and the things that we serve, is not the Christ. But it's our stuff. And how we get it and how we keep it. And we fail miserably in the gospel. Each and every time we allow this to happen. Each and every time. So our task particularly while we struggle through this corona, while we're socially distant, while attendance is sporadic, while we're not even able to attend as much as we would like. We don't have a big enough facility to, to attend and serve with all of the people who might want to come on any given Sunday. We have our task to get our mind out of the things and off of the externals. Well, I don't like that I have to wear a mask. I don't like that somebody said this. I don't like that. I don't like, well, it's not about me. It's not about my stuff because all of that is external. All of that is external. And our task while we struggle through this is to strive as Christians, as our parish, as Orthodoxy to uplift our neighbor, to hold the Christ at the center of our life, and not let our things, our acquisition of things, or the fact that someone else said, Well, you can't do the things that you might want to do, become what dominates our hearts and our soul and our mind. We lose unity. We lose peace, we lose joy, we lose love, and we are not walking with Christ, and we are not building those that which truly has meaning. We are not truly building our wealth in the Lord. We are focused exclusively on our wealth of this world, on our wealth of the kingdom of this world, and failing to serve the gospel, failing to serve uh, what Christ said, the kingdom that is not of this world. This is our task. This is our memory. For if my servants, my kingdom was of this world, truly my servants would fight. But our kingdom is not of this world, and our fight is not with the world, it's right here that we may be strong enough 
that when the world fights, that we can stand our ground. And we can hold the Christ in our heart, in our soul, and in our mind, and place him before all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory forever. Let us say with all our soul and all our mind, let us say, Lord have mercy. O Lord Almighty God of our fathers, we pray thee, heart and have mercy. Lord have mercy. And mercy and support, O God, according to thy great goodness, we pray thee, heart and have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Our Archbishop David and for all our brethren in Christ. Again, we pray for this country to present for all civil authorities and for those who serve in the armed forces. Again, we pray for our brethren and the priest, the deacon, the higher ones, the higher deacon, and for all our brothers who didn't cry. Most holy Orthodox patriarchs for the blessed and ever memorable time of this holy house, for the departed servants of God, Metropolitan Theodosius, for all our fathers and brethren in the Orthodox, who part of this life before us, who here in all the world, lie and sleep in the Lord. Pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, and visitation for the servants of God, the art. Bishop David, with Olga Michelle, Cameron Kate, Michelle Deacon, and David Nikolai, for the Jews, the Brandon Michaela, for those gathered here this day, for those whom each other might call to mind, and for the pardon and remission of their sins. What about nothing good? What about nothing good? What about nothing good? Again, we pray that we may be delivered from the impending threat of the coronavirus, and that thou would send thy angel to watch over us. And protect us. Again, we pray that thou wouldst preserve our civil authorities, that they may be granted wisdom and mercy in their decisions. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the health and recovery of those suffering. Virus, guide the hand of the physicians, uphold the nurses, strengthen the CNAs and medical staff, and preserve those who are healthy. Again, we pray that thou wouldst preserve our land and restore it to economic health and deliver those who have lost employment, uphold our children that they may grow in thy love, preserve the homeless and show mercy on those. Suffering economic hardship. And we pray that thou wouldst enable us to continue to serve our suffering brothers and sisters in peace. Again, we pray for those who bring offerings and do good works this whole and all venerable house, for those who labor and for those who sing, for all the people here present, who await thy great and rich mercy. For thou art a merciful God, and love us, and kind as we do send up glory to the Father, and the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now and ever in the ages of ages. Amen. Lord have mercy. Let us the faithful 
Beatitude, the most blessed Tikhon, Archbishop of Washington, Metropolitan of All America and Canada, and his eminence, the most reverend David, Archbishop of Sitka and Alaska. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. For the Honorable Presbytery, to the African Christ, for this God protected land, its President, the Congress, the Supreme Court, all civil authorities. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. For the sick, the suffering, for captives, and for their salvation, for the servant of God, the Archbishop to David, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. 
For those who part of this life before us in the hope of resurrection life eternal, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and through the ages of ages. May you and all Orthodox Christians, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and through the ages of ages. Thank 
pure and blameless hands and we give thanks and bless it and hallowed it and broken it. He gave it to his holy disciples and apostles saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you for the remission of sin. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sin. Amen. Thine own of thine own, we offer unto thee on behalf of all. When we call upon thee and we pray thee and we supplicate thee, send down thy Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts here offered, and make this bread to be the precious body of thy Christ. Amen. Amen. And that which is in this cup to be the precious blood of thy Christ. Amen. Amen. Making the change for thy Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Especially <clears throat> for our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, tell us what was in their Virgin Mary. <laughs> Sitka and all Alaska, grant unto thy holy churches in peace, safety, honor, health, and length of days, right to divide them without thy truth. Sanctified, but I pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That I'm not going to receive the 
is holy, most heavenly, and mighty, and is and the savor of spiritual sweetness, who will send out upon us for joy this divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. danger and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Let us save us and mercy us and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. Let the whole day be worthy, only peaceful and sinless. Let us ask the Lord. Praise this, O Lord. In the name of the Lord, faithful guide and guard of our souls and bodies, let us ask the Lord. Praise this, O Lord. Pardon and forgiveness of our true sins and offenses, and us ask of the Lord. Christ is the Lord. All things good and powerful for our souls and peace for the world, and us ask of the Lord. Christ is the Lord. That we may complete the remainder of our life in peace and repentance, and us ask of the Lord. Christ is the Lord. Christian, in our life, we must bring us peaceful and a good defense before the very judgment seat of Christ, and us ask. Let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. And make this will your master with the boldness and without condemnation. You dare to call upon me, the heavenly God is Father, and to say.
grace and compassion, love towards mankind, thy only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thy own holy, good, and life feeding spirit, now and ever in the ages of ages.
I bear to approach thee with the worthy. When the mind accuses me, what if it's not a word in And I secure the condemnation of my own sinful soul. And so by the defilement of my soul, then save me, O God of I come to the
always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Save thy people and bless thy inheritance, preserve the fullness of thy church, sanctify those that love the beauty of thy house, glorify them, return to thy divine power, and forsake us not that hope in thee. Give peace to thy world, to thy church, and to thy priest, to all civil authorities, and to all thy people, for every good gift and every perfect gift from above and come down to me, the Father of light. In the leader we send up glory, thanksgiving, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever in the two ages of age. Amen. Blessed be the very name of the Lord, heavens forth and forevermore. Blessed be the very name of the Lord, heavens forth and forevermore. Blessed be the very
the blessing of the Lord be upon you, for His grace and love for mankind, always, now, and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to your Christ, our God, and our hope. Glory to thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now and forever, and unto ages of ages. May you as with the dead Christ to God to the prayers of his most pure and all blameless mother, the holy and glorious and all honorable apostles of our Father among the saints, John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, whose liturgy we have celebrated this day of the holy, glorious, and right victorious martyrs, Peter the youth martyr and Jew, Vanelli, and his companion of King Agath. The proto martyrs of America, of our venerable and God bearing fathers, give us into Moscow, Apostle of the Americas, Stephen of Moscow, and Light of North America, and Sava of Serbia, and Italians, and Aiden, and Jacob, and Light of the Alaskan people, <coughs> Sebastian of San Francisco, Jackson, and Sitka, and Herman the Wonder Worker of Alaska, of our Holy Father among the Saints, Nicholas, Archbishop of Mira, and Wonder Worker of Nicaea, the Holy Apostle of the Seventy. Archippus and Philemon and the others with them, whose memory we celebrate this day, and of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, and of all the saints, have mercy upon us and save us, for as much as he is good and loveth mankind. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, glory to Jesus Christ. Glory forever. Uh, it's a relatively quiet week this week. Uh, again, uh, to sign up for services for those who are watching in town and would like to join us, uh, go to our website, uh, www.stnicholasjuno.org slash calendar. Uh, and there's a little red button that says sign up uh, this month. Click on that and that will take you to the sign up sheet uh, that will allow us to know how many we can fit in. So I've got it arranged, you know, we're allowed to have, according to CBJ codes, between 15 and 20, as long as we maintain social distancing. Um, we've got a new choir contraption over here, just off the camera that you can't see, that allows, it's a divider that allows us to put the choir together, uh, rather than requiring to be spread all over the place. So we have one, two, three, and in the narthex, four places for families to, who aren't singing to stand. So if you wish to come, sign up, bring your household. It's not, it's, it's important, as we said, that you know, we maintain our walk with Christ and part of our walk with Christ as Orthodox is gathering as the community. The church is what you can see, the gathering of the people. In the building, the church is not the building, but the gathering of the people. So if we're not gathering, as Orthodox, it raises the important question, are we really being Orthodox? So thank you very much for tuning in today. Uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, those who are here, thank you for coming. Those who will be coming next week, we look forward to seeing you. And those who have tuned in, thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, the Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us. Amen.